my name is Louise. And hi, I'm Emma. And you're listening to Murder or Myth. The true crime podcast where not everything is true. The aim of the game is to find out whether the story is actually a murder or if it's just a myth. Now, let's get started. So, hi Louise, how are you? Hi Emma, I'm good, thanks, how are you? I'm really good, excited to tell you another fascinating story today and see if I can stump you again. You're not gonna. I'm ready to be riveted, but not stumped. Okay, (laughs) prepare yourself for for some riveting. This is the story of the soap maker of Caraggio. Where's Caraggio? In Italy. Okay. Italian. So this is the story of Leonardo Cianciulli, the soap maker of Caraggio. She was an Italian serial killer who liked to make soap. I'd love to make soap sometime. Yeah, I think it would be actually really good DIY, yeah, like fun satisfying. activity. Yeah. Okay, so we will go back to her roots. It's a bit of an oldie. She was born in the Italian kingdom at the time in a place called Montella. And she had a troubled youth and had mental health issues and attempted suicide twice. This was only early on in her life. And at the age of 23, she married her husband, Raphael. Um, and this was against her mother's wishes and subsequently claimed her mother had cursed them. What year is this again, do you say? Did you say a year? I don't think I said a year yet, but she was born in 1894. 1894, okay. So 23, she gets married and her mother curses them because her mother was against the marriage as she had planned for her to marry another man. So five years go by and the couple move away from where they were staying with Leonardo's mother and move to Raphael's hometown. So they spend the next six years there until Leonardo was imprisoned for fraud in 1927. In prison for fraud. So she's, she's in prison for fraud. Leonardo yes. was a woman's name. Leonardo, yeah. Leonardo, oh sorry. Yeah. So after her relatively short stint in prison, the couple moved to live somewhere else again, and this place was called Lacedonia. In 1930, their house was destroyed in an earthquake, so they moved a final time to Correggio, a small town in the Po Valley of Italy. So they set up their life here again, and at the age of 36, Leonardo opened a small shop in the town. She was well liked around the area as a kind woman and doting mother. They had a child. Yeah, we're gonna get into that mm, right okay. now. Now, some facts that lean into the curse narrative. Okay, so I'm just gonna you can decide for yourself. Sometime during her early life, she visited a fortune teller, and it's a bad choice. I feel like it's always yeah. I'd go and they'd tell me like a bad fortune. I'd be like. Fuck. Well, just wait what till you now? hear her fortune. I okay. don't think it gets worse than this. So the fortune teller told her she would get married and have kids, but that all the kids would die. So not good from the get-go. She also was said to have visited Romany Gypsy, who'd done palm readings, and who told her, in your right hand, I see prison, and in your left hand, a criminal asylum. Okay. So not going well. Uh, between the two facts above and her mother, the curse wasn't looking great. Like, it was looking mm-hmm. a little bit believable. And unfortunately, by coincidence or actual fortune telling, it was true. Do you believe in curses? Um, I don't know. I've never had a curse on me. Um, <laughs> You're too I'd lovely. Who would put a curse on you? <laughs> Probably you. <laughs> I knew how. Uh, yeah, so fair. Um, hmm, so I don't know, well. but I feel like back in the day, they definitely believed in curses for sure. Okay, yeah, fair. Maybe it was like a lack of modern medicine or something. It's like, <laughs> I curse you, but they really just gave them the flu and they died. Interesting conclusion. Maybe. I don't know. So throughout her marriage, Leonardo had 17 pregnancies. She had three miscarriages and 10 other children that made it to full term died in early childhood. Okay. So What did they die from? Anything and everything, probably. In early childhood? Yeah. It was the 1800s. Okay. Sorry, 1900s. Okay. I don't know how that works, but anyways. um, So this was... She had four children who survived into adulthood. Giuseppe, Norma, Bernardo and Biagio. So this is where the accounts of her f- being a doning mother come into play. Um, and she always had these very unfortunate events in her life and curses, fortunes hanging over her. She was fiercely protective of the children. Like due to the fact she was being told that all her children would die. And yeah, makes sense. the majority of them have done so, unfortunately. So you can imagine her anguish when her eldest son, Giuseppe, enrolled in the army in 1939 in preparation for Second World War. She wanted to protect him at all costs and it consumed her. So she decided the best way to protect her son from death during his time in the army was to get some sacrifices. And it was more specifically human sacrifices. So she just decided upon herself that in order to protect her son, she would just kill other people. 
Okay. And this is going to balance out the curse for sure. Um, so here is how she done it. Fasina Seti was a lady from the village who had come to um, Leonardo in help of finding a husband for her. So Leonardo told her of a suitable partner in Pola, a neighbouring village, but asked her to tell no one of the news. She persuaded Seti to write letters and postcards to her friends saying that like, I'm okay, I'm going to find a husband, don't worry about me. And the letters were sent and right before she went to Pola, Leonardo, sorry, Seti visited Leonardo one more time before she went and she was never seen again. Leonardo killed her with an axe and dragged her body into a closet where it was cut up into nine parts and blood was gathered in a basin. She added caustic soda to her victim's body parts until it became dark sludgy mush and then disposed of it in a septic tank. Mm. Yeah, very detailed and not nice. And then she- Very w- detailed. <laughs> sauce. A bit uh, sauce. She waited for her blood to coagulate and dry the- <laughs> She waited for blood to coagulate? Coagulate. Didn't someone say that yesterday, that exact term? Someone did say that yesterday. That's that's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> she waited for the blood to coagulate and dried it in an oven. She later ground it up with sugar and flour and baked it into some tea cakes. Yum. Yeah, so she later described them as crunchy and it was found out that she <laughs> she did, she fed them to her neighbours, herself and her husband. The neighbours did not know and her husband did and she did. Okay. Her next victim was Francesca Suave. She was a second victim. Leonardo claimed to have found her a job job at a school for girls. So she persuaded her to write letters again, same as before, and she visited Leonardo right before her departure. She too was given drugged wine and killed with an axe. Her body got the awful treatment, same as Seti. And she, in this case, received payment. So... Before she murdered um, the lady, she got money off her for helping her find a job. Okay. Killed her. And her final victim was a widow called Virginia Cacciapi, a former soprano. Leonardo claimed to have found work as a secretary for this lady. And as the other two women were instructed, she was told not to tell another person and got sent letters to all her families and friends. So she agreed and she came to visit her for one last time. She murdered her at the exact same as the other two with an axe, but in this case, she used her body to make soap. So this is her statement after she got arrested. Okay, I'll read it. She ended up in a pot like the other two. Her flesh was fat and white. When it had melted, I added a bottle of cologne. After a long time on the boil, I was able to make some most acceptable creamy soap. I gave various neighbors and acquaintances the cakes too were better. This woman was really sweet. So that's what she said. In English or Italian? Uh, well, I have to assume Italian, but it's been translated. It's translated, okay. Or written that way. Mm. You never know. So she again got money from this lady and she sold all the victims' shoes, clothing. She was found out to be the murderer by one of the lady's sisters-in-law. Albertina Fanti grew suspicious when her sister-in-law disappeared suddenly. She reported to the superintendent at the time that she was last seen going into Leonardo's house. Uh, Leonardo did not confess to the murders until they had her son um, in custody under suspicion of murdering him. So when her son was taken into custody, she was like, whoa, 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 it was me. Please Mm -hmm. don't take my son away. So she was found guilty of all the crimes and sentenced to 30 years in prison and three years in a criminal asylum. But she died in the criminal asylum in 1970. That is a story of Leonardo Cianciulli, the soap maker of Correggio. And in today's time, she probably would have gotten treatment for depression and other mental health issues early on in her life. Yeah. And it wouldn't have got to that point, but unfortunately it didn't. And a number of the artifacts of the case are still around, including the pot the victims were boiled in. Okay. And that's the story of the soap maker of Correggio. Okay, so I'm a maker of Correggio. I'm, I'm actually a bit unsure. So you gave the age of people a lot, which seems like an interesting detail to be mentioned. And I was like, mm, that sounds like something that I would like write. Okay. Um, Leonardo and Raphael sound like pretty like basic Italian names. 
<laughs> which makes me think like you came up with them and then googled the okay. like more complicated ones as you right. got into the story um so those two are making me lean towards a myth yeah. The quote that you gave is a bit sinister if you wrote it yourself. But I also <laughs> wouldn't know. put it past you. <laughs> oh, damn. Um, I should have wrote it down now. What was the thing that was making me lean towards a murder? I can't tell you. Something about the way that you said the artifact makes it sound a little bit more real. I feel like that's a detail you wouldn't think to add in yourself. Okay. Put on a seasoned writer um, now. Oh, I should, I, there's something I was going to mention in it and then I didn't. Oh, was it the detail? The detail. So, like, you know when I, when I was telling my story a couple of weeks ago in the 1800s, like, it was passed down generation to generation, but I, I could find so little detail on it. Yeah. Now, obviously, it's a much less well-known story. But the fact that there was so much detail surrounding this story that, like, how was it all documented? Like, it's over 100 yeah. years old. Okay, I get yeah. That I'm wondering... Like, where do they get all this information? So, with that in mind, I'm going to say it's a myth. Your myth final answer. Myth final answer. It's a murder. <laughs> Louise. It's yeah, a murder. so bad at this. Yeah, I, I was kind of like, the whole time, like, she's going to guess it's a murder because, I don't know, these Italians' names I'm trying to say. <laughs> I can't yeah, pronounce them correctly. The names, but I was also like, you'd have to write down Italian yeah. names. Like, you can't just be like, Emma. No, um, it's a very real murder, and I see, when I read out the statement as well, I thought you were going to get it straight away, because it's kind of unhinged, and there was- It is a bit unhinged. There's another statement that I didn't read out, because I was like, I can't read out two statements, it's going to be, you know, a lot. Yeah. But I'll tell, I'll read it out now, if you like. Yeah, read it out now. It's what she done to the first two victims. So she said- I threw the pieces in a pot and added seven kilos of caustic soda, which I had bought to make soap and stir the mixture until the pieces dissolved in a thick dark mush that I poured into several buckets and emptied into a nearby septic tank. As for the blood in the basin, I waited until it had coagulated, dried it in an oven, ground it mixed it with flour, sugar, chocolate, milk and eggs, as well as a bit of margarine, kneaded all the ingredients together. I made lots of crunchy tea cakes and served them to the ladies who came to visit, though Giuseppe and I also ate them. Like... Who has recorded this? The, That's insane At the time, she she just went and told the police everything to save her son. I know, I know, but like, there I know, was a lot of stuff, like, the murders that you see a lot now are like, in journalistic, like, in journals. Like, I'm like, I, I don't know, for some reason it just doesn't compute to me, like, how they have all of this information still kept from, like, what, writing it down in a diary? Yeah, well, it was 1946 that this murder trial happened, so... That's yeah, I guess not that far ago, not but still. too far ago. And also, like, she was very much, um... Like, famous? I, no, I, I'd say people were just kind of like, oh, this lady needs help, or, like, there's something there, because yeah. at the trial as well, another detail that I didn't really want to go into, because I know it would be so obviously yeah. a murder. I'm thinking, like, yeah. there's some things you have to leave out. There are some things you have to leave out. Yeah. I think that's fine, as long as they're not, like... Major key details. Yeah, no, it wasn't a key detail. It was just the fact that at her trial, like she went so far as to correct them. Like they would say something, and she went ahead to tell them more information. And okay, yeah. like she told them that the ladle she used for creating the soap of these women's body, she gave to the effort for the war in Italy. They badly needed metal, so she gave her ladle, and she's like, "That piece of evidence isn't here because I gave it to the a war effort. You know, they needed metal, yeah. like." Um, yeah. But yeah, a few little details that I nearly read out there and would have completely sure screwed it all. But anyways, she, um, there is a pot that's still around. That's the artifact. Yeah, that, that one, one I you think, didn't like, mean to read out. That was for afterwards. Yeah, you wouldn't think to include that, I feel. Yeah, and there was also a play wrote about it about called it. Love and Magic in Mama's Kitchen. Mama's and Kitchen. it ran on Broadway in 1983, that play. Oh, yeah, And it was that. So that's interesting. That was an interesting story. Yeah, I kind of crazy. Shout out to my favorite murder. I found it on that podcast. I didn't listen to the episode yet, but I just seen the title and I was like, "Oh, that sounds fun." That does sound fun. Thanks, thanks for listening, Louise. Thanks for telling me the story, Emma. <laughs> this has been Murder or Myth with your hosts Louise and Emma. On uh, this week's episode, Louise guessed a myth, and when in fact the story was a murder. I'm a bit bummed about that, but anyway. Thanks for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe. And join us next week for another thrilling adventure. Slay. Find <laughs> Okay, sorry, let's go. I read it and was like, I need to say it straight away. 
join us next week for another thrilling <laughs> that was your line <laughs> sorry okay I get now join us next week for another thrilling adventure find us on all streaming platforms Shalay. Oh lord, I'm getting so bad at this. I it's just like losing over and over again. It feels so bad to me. Just give up. <laughs>